Ernest, we were just on the floor of your wonderful new facility here. Mm -hmm. By the way, thank you for having us. Oh, pleasure to have you here. I enjoy shooting the shit with you. You know, like you're a great gun guy. Uh, you're one of the masters. Uh, so it was funny because we started talking about how I'm over in Italy last year. We're talking with Franco Beretta and Carlo Ferlito and both of them independently, you know, two of the biggest guys at Beretta. Uh, they both independently said, this gun is the most underrated gun that Beretta makes independently of each other, had no idea that the other had said it, and you agreed. And that gun is the, the PX4, without a doubt. Why? Um, so I think there's a lot of reasons why. The funny thing about it is that I couldn't stand this gun. I shouldn't even say I couldn't stand it. I had no opinions of it. It was just like I was agnostic towards it, and it wasn't like the beloved 92 for me because I love the 92. Um, the 92 is iconic. It's absolutely This has iconic. no curb, I yeah. uh, curb appeal. It just, it's, it's, you know, and I think they tried really hard to try to make it sexy and do some things with it, and it didn't, it, on the American market, it didn't get anywhere. Internationally, they've been extremely successful with this gun with military and law enforcement. It's been a very, because it's won a bunch of really stringent trials. Um, and there's a lot of little details behind that. I think the main reason that, and of course, I'm specifically talking about the 9mm because I'm not a big fan of 40, never have been. Actually, even in the hot days of 40, I was like 40 silly, but that's another conversation. But um, they built it to be a 40, and they built it to be, and I didn't know this until years later when I went to Italy and was talking with some of the engineers. Actually, one of them, he's retired now, one of the guys that was like the lead guy on this project. This gun was built to shoot 20,000 rounds of full power 40 without changing a single part. Does it do that? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the validation protocol, which is what Beretta calls it for this gun, is five guns, 20,000 rounds a piece, no parts breakage. If mm -hmm. anything breaks, then, then there's something wrong. Let's walk it back a little bit before mm -hmm. we go any, any further. For people who don't know what the PX4 Storm is, I can think of no one better to describe it. What is the Beretta PX4 Storm? Uh, well, the, I mean, the, we can talk about the gun itself. The, gun, the Beretta PX4 was built to be, a, at the time, a highly modular service pistol. I mean, they wanted something that, that an armorer could, you know, replace parts on it very easily. And it, the example that I'll, I'll give you, I'm going to try to not make a whole lot of noise when I do this, but the trigger housing is kind of like the original chassis system. Um, this whole trigger pack comes out all together. So there's no like, hey, the hammer needs to be replaced, the sear needs to be, if any of that stuff happens, you take the whole thing out, you put a whole new one in. Mm -hmm. For a police department, military agency, that's really good. Mm -hmm. I don't need a lot of training to do that. Um, so they built it with that in mind. I think I've shot that gun a little bit. Um, <laughs> I know, that is disgusting. It yeah, looks like it's black disgusting. cake it's frosting been, in there. Yeah. Um, but you think so, there are any gunsmiths here that can maybe clean, <laughs> clean that? <laughs> yeah, or I, I, you know I should anyone? clean it. <laughs> um, they also built it, uh, they wanted a gun that shot softly and was easy to manage 40 because a lot of guns are not fun in 40 at all. This gun actually shoots 40 extremely well, and they, that's the reason for the rotating barrel. A lot of people say it dissipates stuff when it, you know, the barrel turns, and I think there's some truth to that, but I think the big thing that makes the gun shoot soft is the fact that the barrel doesn't do this. Like a, any John Browning system, when the slide unlocks, the barrel does this. When it does this, that adds to the recoil or the muzzle rise of mm -hmm. the gun. Uh, so I think that is a significant piece. They, they also balanced the recoil spring weight, the slide weight very well with the caliber. So I think they all shoot extremely well. The PX4 Compact is an unbelievably great gun. It shoots like a full-size gun. I mean, it, it literally will outshoot most full-size guns as far as how fast you can shoot it, how quickly it recovers the recoil impulse. And I, at this point, have, I have to have 250,000 rounds through PX4s at this point. Mm -hmm. This particular gun, um, this was the 50,000 round test gun that I did, 50,000 rounds in a year, which mm -hmm. I shot, did not shoot well at the end of that year because it was too much. 
God, and that really, that is busted, Ernest. Like you are, you need to spread this thing down with some <laughs> non queer It is actually disgusting. It is disgusting. Look at this. I shot it this weekend in the point one tactics class. Oh my God, Ernest, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> this gun went uh, at forty six thousand rounds. I broke the cam block. And the only reason I knew I broke the cam block is the day before I had had two weird mouth uh, stoppages, uh -huh. right? The gun never like jam jammed and shut uh -huh. down. I'd have a quick stoppage I could fix. And I hadn't had, I'd had so few. I was like two in one day. I was like, well, I should know when I should probably put some lube on the gun. Right. When I took the gun apart, it broke into two pieces. So uh -huh. the gun was still working <laughs> with a broken locking <laughs> insert. I put a different locking insert in there and finished the test out. This gun now has uh, just shy of 70,000 rounds through it still runs great. How many malfunctions do you think that you've had other than the, the two that you talked about when you literally broke the gun in half? So this gun had, uh, I want to say nine stoppages in 50,000 rounds. That's insane. Yeah. That is now I've had the, the, what I have to do now is like, I'm still using the magazines from this test and my new gun. Uh -huh. And they're still working just fine? No, no I'm starting to have problems. <laughs> they're starting to get a little tired. But this, one's, <laughs> this one just this weekend had a couple of weird malfunctions uh -huh. with it. And it was just the magazines just, just not lifting the yeah, rounds up. Because yeah, yeah. they're just tired. I need they're to throw them away and get them Ernest, magazines. stop it. Leave <laughs> and us stop, alone. Yeah. Stop bullying us. <laughs> I am tired. They're just, <laughs> they've been beat up. But, uh, you know, they've got, at this point, between this gun, a, a gun in the middle that's another one that I have that I've shot probably 40,000 rounds through. Mm -hmm. And now this gun, which is a relatively new gun that I'm playing with some new stuff on, um, they're the same magazines have kind of traveled through all of them. It's like, bro, I'm enough. I'm right, done. right, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, yeah. But what else makes uh, this gun special? I mean, we've got the, the rotating barrel that mm -hmm. we talked about, which is unusual. The fact that this was actually a very early modular design. What else do we have that makes this um, so underrated? <clears throat> right out of the gate. The, they built the gun to be easily modifiable. So they've got two different slide stops that are available from the factory. They've got a, which is relatively inexpensive. The mag button kit is like 20 bucks. So you got three different size mag buttons you can put on here. There's one, two, three, four different types of safety lefters you mm. can put on the gun. And you can mix and match them like I did on this one. This mm. is like a 92 style lever. lever. I can convert it to G I mean, in decock right. only by just knocking a plunger out. Uh -huh. um, uh, they've got solid guide rods. They've got polymer guide rods. They've got a like a whole different parts of three different back straps, which is was at the time they launched this gun twenty years ago was not that no, common. Yeah, yeah. No the mag button's reversible. The compact has is ambidextrous with a slide stop as well. Um, it disassembles extremely easily. I mean, you don't have to pull the trigger to take it apart, so you just pull the levers down and the yeah. slide comes off of it. Um, but the big thing, I think, is that the gun shoots so well. Wow. Oh. They are extremely accurate. Um, they are very reliable, uh, unbelievably durable, like probably the most durable gun that I've ever owned. Mm -hmm. And um i think all of that leads to incredible shootability stand by stand by stand by stand by you still worried about your accuracy Oh, f yeah. So this is a, uh, a surprise to me. You know, I'm like, man, these things got to be going all over the place. And, how, and everybody back here was laughing at me. Did you see how the pace went faster and faster and faster yep. and faster and faster and faster and faster? And you didn't, you didn't drop a single shot. Yeah. Okay. Like this one, I want you to try the trigger on this gun. This is my new gun that I'm playing with, whatever. So try the single action on that gun. Now cycle it and reset it. Uh, wait, what, what just happened? <laughs> That's like a one millimeter reset. Yeah. And look at, check out, see how much pre-travel you have in it. Uh, That's, that is really wild. 
Wait, how, how so did... That's a, that is a 1911 single action yeah. right there. Yeah, absolutely. How, how did you accomplish this? It's just a just different parts. That's a match hammer, our trigger bar, or some other kind of stuff. And that's a, like a seven pound double action and then like a two and a half pound single action. So this gun is, from a shootability standpoint, is unbelievable. I, I am just absolutely blown away. And the compact, this is what you, you carry this on a daily basis. Yeah, like that's you, my carry. Yeah. yeah, you put your money where your mouth is. Like yeah, you, you trust this thing. Let's say that I say to you, you know what? Um, Two things I don't like about this gun. One, it's not striker fired. You know, I, I think hammer fired is a little ridiculous, and I think that gives it a high bore axis and makes it less shootable. What would what would you say to me if that's well, how I felt? I would argue that uh, I will let you shoot this against a Glock 19 any day, and you'll you'll give up on the bore axis mm -hmm. answer right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. uh, the striker fired thing is I've done a ton of videos on those. I mean, if you want a striker-fired gun, get a striker-fired gun. I don't, I don't really care. Um, I like a hammer-fired gun uh, for a series of reasons. I believe that they're more reliable. Most people will find that a hammer-fired gun is easier to cycle, cycle and chamber around on it because a striker-fired gun relies on the recoil spring to keep the gun into battery. And striker-fired guns have, a, uh, the trigger component is trying to push the slide out of battery. So it needs more recoil spring pressure. Whereas a hammer-fired gun, the hammer is the secondary spring that keeps right. the gun from unlocking. So I have a relatively light cycle and or loading capability with a hammer-fired gun over a striker-fired gun. Uh, the other thing that I think is that that first shot, that DA shot that everybody's, everybody wants a gun that's easy to shoot because it makes them look good on the range. But guns that make you look good on the range also get you in trouble when you're stressed out. Yeah, sure. If you're a professional, like, phenomenal shooter, and I never make mistakes, I never stub my toe, I never have problems, then great. Then shoot a, you know, a light 1911 trigger on your striker-fired gun, and you'll you know, be able to shoot really great. But you better be really careful when you're holstering that thing, and you yeah. better not have your finger on the trigger when you shouldn't. Yeah. And you shouldn't hear either. But the distance of that first shot is what keeps you out of trouble. And from a shootability standpoint, I don't think it matters. If it did, you wouldn't have guys like J.J. Regazzo winning you know, national right. championships with the traditional double action gun. Um, and the other piece is this, being able to put my thumb on that hammer when I go and holster that mm -hmm. gun is a, an order of magnitude from a safety standpoint. And it's not because you have your finger on the trigger. Everybody says, well, don't put your finger on the trigger. It's not the fingers that I'm worried about. It's the piece of T-shirt. Right. It's the drawstring. It's the zipper tag. It's yep. anything else. And everybody says, well, just be careful. Well, yeah. Sure. Everybody's course. careful yeah, until they're everybody's not. Everybody's careful until they're not. Of course you, not. You've heard my uh, index carry joke, right? What's that? It's terrible. Uh, that's what I call appendix carry because mm -hmm. you do it enough and you lose the pee-pee. Uh, index carry thing, huh? <laughs> Boop. Cut. To close this one out, why does no one give a shit about the PX4? Why is this an underrated gun instead of an appreciated gun? Oh man, that, that that's a really good question. I think that um, I think I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think Beretta brought it to the states, and they tried to replace the 92 with it. And the people that loved the 92 took offense to that, mm -hmm, sure. if that makes sense. So like right. they were trying to force, like, no, this is better than the 92. Um, and then the people that were fans of 92s were not, people that were not fans of 92s were like, we don't care what Brett mm -hmm. says, right? Because, yeah, sure. you know, it's just got to be striker fired or it's got to be whatever. Um, but I think that that, that happened. Um, and then I don't think anyone really gave it a true shot. They just ignored it. Um, yeah. and didn't really pay any attention to it. And so it didn't get any real traction. Kind of faded into the background. It kind of, I can think it kind of faded. Internationally, did extremely well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got a lot of large international contracts and the gun's not going anywhere. Um, when I started shooting this gun uh, and realized how good it was, I did some post on this on the pistol form and started getting some traction on there. There is a, a significant, I don't want to say huge, mm -hmm. right? It's no Glock 19, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a significant fan base for the PX4 out there because the people that have them absolutely love them. They just, they're just flabbergasted at how well they can shoot the gun. Well, I hope that this video 
makes that fan base even larger. I hope that people appreciate the PX4 the way you and I do. You're the one who made me appreciate the PX4. Whenever you sent me that one that I reviewed, I didn't give a shit Bill, to do it. Bill did all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My well, man Bill, Bill, yeah, yeah. Bill set up, but <laughs> but because of you guys, I learned to appreciate, it. and maybe everyone watching will. I've got to say, Ernest, uh, this has been an honor to be here. Thank you for appreciate having it. us. Thank you for sharing your knowledge about this truly underappreciated platform. And you're welcome. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to be bringing you more from LTT.